Jotting It Down, an exploration into the use of language within abstract expressionist artwork and how Brian Ratner uses mark making to reveal hidden melodies within his work. When presented with abstract expressionism, an emotional response will be elicited within the audience, seeing this bundle of marks and scribbles as the visual of the piece. My theory stands to question how this is possible. If a non-representational piece of abstract artwork evokes an emotional response within someone, what is prompting that response? After viewing a picture of a visually defining image, your brain will react with a reflexed response as it can recognise that image for what it is and release that familiar response. Whereas looking at a piece of non-representational artwork, essentially standing as a picture of nothing, it is up to the viewer's brain to interpret any marks they see within the work, followed by the evoked emotional response. I thought a lot about how this works psychologically and as the artist compared to the audience. As someone who paints in an abstract expressionist style, when I create a piece with no plan or goal in mind, just working completely intuitively, how do I decide what needs to be defined or lightened or covered or marked, etc.? Why do I stand back and look at my piece mid-process and decide that the bottom left-hand side needs to be completely covered in white? Since I'm not referring to an image, it is solely my intuition that is telling me to do so. Looking at Ratner's work and becoming the audience, I found myself interpreting the marks and symbols as physical language itself. When researching Ratner's creative developments throughout the past few years, societal impacts, he talks about working with music and melodies and how the movement of music has always influenced his work. This language that I can see over the piece could easily be valued to Ratner as melodies over the written language. Viewing this piece and other works of Ratner's searching for this visual language, I applied that view to other expressionist works, notably Lee Krasner. She stated, My painting is so autobiographical if anyone can take the trouble to read it. Her description of interpreting the piece as reading led me to think about how literal my action of reading Ratner's mark making is. It wasn't until I went on to further research language and writing that I found Gustav Flaubert's letters and found the two images side by side on my laptop. One half of the screen, this chaotic, dense manuscript covered in harsh scribbles and physically written English words that I could fully comprehend, sat next to this expressive and liberated riot of colour when I found myself reading them the same. Drastically different variations, of course, but the same core nonetheless. I then raised the question that there is language at the core of all non-representational artwork, being that a negative image cannot evoke any initial response without the added element of language. To consider mark making as a universal language theory, you have to consider the postmodernist era. The artistic movement from the 1960s to the 1990s that rejected modern art and idealism. There was a paradigm of existentialism that adapted the art of expressionism into something popularised and accessible, rejecting previously cemented constraints of established art techniques. Artists adapted this idea of creating pictures of nothing, still, however, evoking that emotional response, something that became an integral perspective on artistic interpretation for the years to follow. The expressive fallacy, a concept created by art critic Hal Foster, claims that the expressive content of works can overwhelm their aesthetic content, and that an artist should be judged according to the work physically shown in the piece, not the deeper meaning or symbolic nature behind it. Abstract expressionism falls under the category of conceptual work, focusing largely on the artist's intentions over the physical aesthetics of the piece. However, what Foster's concept fails to consider is the lack of emotional boundary that persists. A work of art won't convey its full impact if particular characteristics are sought after 
and any surviving premises will be altered. To fully understand the piece, you would have to read it with an open mind, without any preconceived notions as to what you should or shouldn't be feeling. Only then would any authentic emotion be aired, triggered by certain colours and shapes interpreted in the piece as a familiar likeness. When discussing linguistics within the expressive fallacy, Foster writes, the whole notion of an inner experience entered our consciousness only after it has found a language that the individual understands, i.e. a translation of a situation into a familiar situation. To understand, naively but merely means to be able to express something old and familiar. It seems somewhat contradictory to state that a familiar trigger within an artwork can evoke that emotional response that he is so far against, and to see the description of the inner experience being developed by the old and familiar, after claiming that work should be a communicative process between artist and viewer, simply negates the net claim of fallacious expression. There are two ends of language to be explored, the allegorical and the literal. When defining my theory, a phrase that stuck out for me was when I began to compare a mark or a brush of a certain colour on the canvas to something a lot more literal, like a full stop or a comma. In the 2016 movie Arrival, linguist expert Louise explains how understanding and translating a new language isn't so much about the words themselves as it is about how they are structured. She emphasises several things while dissecting a question that is directed to be posed to the new species, one of which is that they are aware of the nature of a question. In a more literal sense... If someone were to present you with the sentence in a language you didn't understand, you wouldn't know what it meant. However, if they were to present you with the same sentence, but add a question mark at the end, you would now understand the sentence is asking a question and would therefore have a better understanding of it. Referencing the expressive fallacy once again, the question mark is what we are likely to recognise and respond to, subsequently obtaining a deeper understanding. The question mark represents the mark making of abstract expressionism. For example, in Brian Ratner's Teal Sky, the bleeding stipples of blue draw me in and I think there is a great amount of depth to this piece. There is a sense of pain, but also peace the harsher impressions of black and grey, making the misery feel dated and somewhat nostalgic. I read this piece as poetry to a younger version of myself, or possibly even poetry from my younger self. <laughs> 